So again, I want to thank everybody for coming first. Um, I think we've heard a lot about why diversity is critical, right? Mission critical, and you heard that from the speakers over the last two days. So I'm not going to spend a lot of time on that. Uh, but I hope that you've learned that diversity without inclusion is really not addressing the problem that faces us uh, going forward. Um, the CNO is adding diversity and inclusion to, into his design for maritime superiority. You heard that today as well. I want to emphasize some of the key takeaways that I have in terms of what we need to do as leaders of our organizations and then what each of us can do as individuals. And I'm, not, I'm sure it's not an all-inclusive list, and we do want your feedback on this stuff, so don't feel like uh, this is the end of this whole thing. So as leaders of our organizations, I think we need to create the environment for inclusion. We need to review the policies and procedures and see if these are the barriers that are holding us up. And when we do generate new policies and procedures, we need to think, uh, uh, how are these going to impact the groups that we're trying to include more in our workforce? Uh, so Mr. Gertz had some great leaders, leadership uh, gems for us, right? We create the culture, and when you tolerate bad behaviors, it becomes your new standard. I thought that was really insightful on him, right? Uh, it goes back to some of the things that Admiral Moore and Mr. Smachansky have been putting out about no bystanders on the sexual harassment side. I think it's the same thing here, right? If we see something, we need to say something and do something about it. Uh, Mr. James and Ms. Smoot talked about how we need to give minority groups a seat at the table. Uh, it'll be a challenge. It's challenging to get those into our discussions. It may make it uncomfortable but we need to have that little bit of dynamic tension in the room when we're making decisions for the long-term health of the organization. Uh, show you people that you care about diversity and inclusion. People will care about what the boss cares about. You're all leaders in this organization, so I consider you all bosses. So you need to get that out there and start bringing it to your workforce. Ms. Merriman talked about finding out what we have in common. For me, we have a couple of common things, right? We have the mission of the organization, and we have the organization. And I hope that's enough to start us down the right road to diversity and inclusion. Um, we want to make sure that the audio and the video match. I thought that was really good, right? That's walk the talk. Um, if you're just talking about it, but you don't really do it, and people don't see you taking positive actions, it's just a bunch of talk. Um, you know, our, uh, can, so also I think you need to start continuously assessing yourself, right? Are you reflecting on what others do? Are you the leader that you want to follow? Um, are you using the talent around you, right? Are you giving folks, junior folks or diverse folks, a shot at doing the presentations? You heard a lot about that, right? I'll tell you, my style is really to have everybody else do the presentations. Um, one is they're the subject matter experts, and two, it gives them a shot to try to get um, some experience in, in, in uh, briefing senior leaders, right? You could also say I'm lazy and I like to delegate a lot. Uh, you could take that both ways. I think I'm an enlightened leader that is trying to delegate as much work off my table as possible. So if you walk by my office, you'll know. You'll probably get an action and something to do, um, mostly because I don't want to do it. Okay. That's a joke. Joke. I think Mr. Gertz also said, if you're not delegating, you're not growing the next generation of leaders, and that's what I'm really trying to get to. I think he also had three great characteristics, right, as leaders. Are we curious? Uh, I, I think questioning almost everything we do in a different lens is what we really want to be doing. When I hear things like, that's the way we've always done it, I think some of you saw my reaction in one of the meetings, right? That's when my uh, emotions or passions, or whatever you want to call it, comes out. That is like throwing meat in front of the, the uh, dog, I'll say. How's that, right? Because it just drives me crazy. I, I don't like that as an answer to anything, and folks who have done it with me will, will know that. So for the Warfare Center folks, the um, 350 audacious goals that we got back, you know, I staffed that out to the staff, and uh, all the responses were basically, well, this is the way we've always done it. So now I'm going to personally review all of them with Liz, and we will get better answers to your questions if any of you put those in there. Those will be on Idea Stream, and then we'll keep talking about Idea Stream some more. So, uh, curious, initiative, and persistence were the three that um, Mr. Gerst spoke about. 
We heard a lot about talk about the importance of mentoring, uh, but we also heard from Mr. James the importance of uh, intrusive advocacy in some cases, right? As leaders, if we see that people are not putting in for jobs, we need to go tap them on the shoulder and encourage them to do that, right? That's both men and women, regardless of race, whatever you want to put the categories in, right? If you think somebody is qualified for the job and you're not checking up to see if they're put in for that job, you're doing yourself a disservice, right? And you're doing the organization a disservice. So I need you to step that up. And some of you have gotten calls from me to find out if you're gonna put in for jobs before. I need you to do the same with your folks. We need to keep building that pipeline to ensure that we have a diverse, qualified group of candidates. Uh, and that's only step one, right? We also have to make sure that they're included in our growth. And for the Warfare Center folks, again, I'm going to be looking at some of the tools that we have in the SES core. Uh, we have D Defense Talent Management System. Uh, where's Alonzi? Alonzi's been trying to get me to do that for... No, not, not that. She is. Okay. Okay, so I think we're going we're gonna to see about rolling that out across the Warfare Center. And that, what that really allows you to do is, uh, and it says 14, 15s and up, you put in what jobs you would like, you assess your strengths, and then your supervisor assesses your strengths. So if you want to get some real feedback on how you're doing, this is the way to do it in a much more structured approach than hoping that uh, performance feedback is done. Um, this will force, it, force a discussion, so I'm pretty excited about that. We just need to figure out how to do it. Okay, so now as individuals, right? And remember, I'm talking about leadership at every level. It isn't just the organization and leaders uh, each of you have an individual responsibility. Uh, you need to find your voice, raise your hand, lean in, seek out mentors, have the courage to apply for jobs. Really, what are you waiting for? What is the, po the worst possible outcome if you put in for a job? You may not get the job. But what you will get, or what you should get, is feedback on where your strengths and weaknesses are. And usually these panels are not shy of giving you that feedback. Uh, you heard a lot about the SES uh, feedback. That's kind of a given, and uh, it is brutal, trust me. Um, but it's also helpful, right? Because it's in a closed door environment and you're getting real feedback on why you didn't get the job, why your package didn't get rated as highly qualified, and where you need to go work on your uh, uh, executive leadership qualifications or your technical qualifications. We need to do that for the entire workforce, so we're looking for more of that. Uh, let's see, don't take yourself out into the running. You heard some of that. Um, this, this question about being the imposter in the room, uh, that's a new one for me. I, I thought that was a pretty powerful discussion. Um, and I, all I can do is, is offer that when we hire you, we think you can do the job. Um, so if you don't feel like you can do the job, you really need to talk to your supervisor about that. There are a lot of jobs in the Warfare Center, right? We have 26,000 folks, 10, 10 uh, divisions, NAFC headquarters is represented here, the shipyards. We have places all over the world with the NAFC. If you're really feeling uncomfortable, don't leave before you have a discussion about potentially moving to a different job or a different site that may fit you better. We really, you need to stress that with the folks that you work with too. Uh, if you're not happy about the policies and procedures, um, I really encourage you to go into IdeaStream. That's really why we set this up. We want the feedback. We have a little bit of a crush from the 350 we have right now we got to get through, but we will respond to you. We will share that across all of the warfare centers and now NAVC headquarters is in there. Uh, we are working on the shipyards on what to do with the shipyards because they don't have the connectivity we have uh, within the warfare centers and headquarters. So. If you, if you can't get into IdeaStream, then you can always send me an email. I'll take it, but you better get me a pen that works for North Carolina A&T, okay. All right, that's good, that's good. Uh, and, and as John James says, you know, seek out someone who knows the job, right, and go see them uh, to get a feeling for the job. I'm gonna tell you, I've sat on lots of the boards for selections of stuff, right? People always call me up and say, hey, I'm just calling to see if that job is really, uh, what does Admiral Gertz say, Joe Bag of Donuts, uh, uh, for Joe Bag of Donuts. 
And I got to tell you that, first, there's, there's no way I'm ever going to answer that question to you, right? Because, yeah, okay. But the, the other is, and, I, and after you sit on a, a few panels, um, you'll see that that interview is what really makes or breaks who's going to get the job. There's been many I've gone into where so-and-so is absolutely the person for this job. They're going to get this job. And when we come through the interviews, yeah, no, that's not the person. We're going to pick somebody else. I'll tell you, my very first one I ever sat on, Robin White was selected. Robin White was asked to, was brought in because uh, we wanted to round out the group of folks we were interviewing. Um, her package was maybe, she, in the package-wise, she was probably number four on the list. We kind of thought number one was going to be the strongest. Robin was selected for the job. So was the job slated for somebody? No. Did somebody think they were the front runner and talk about themselves being the front runner? Probably so. And that's how rumors get around and then people don't put in for jobs. I gotta tell you, at least at the SES level, it's very impartial. It's impartial as we can make that, that be. And we do have a diverse group of folks on that. That is supposed to be going on in the division. So at least for our, uh, my COs and TDs, I need to go back and make sure that's happening at the, at the divisions. For NAFC headquarters, that's policy from Admiral Moore as well. And that has flown down, I believe, into the, into the shipyards as well. So if you're not seeing that, I'm in the guile. Please send me a note and we'll get that addressed. I think some other things we saw was uh, trying to shine a light on your own blind spot. That means put some people around you that think differently. Um, it really is effective. Earlier, when I talked about the organizational standards that leaders can set, each individual is responsible as well for our organization standards. Uh, and I'll go back to if you see something, say something, right? That applies to everything we do. No bystanders, bring it up, let's get it addressed. If you can't, and I know there was some frustration on folks uh, that brought up some questions. If you can't deal with it at your own division, then please, you can put it in idea stream. If you want to send it to me, that's fine. Uh, and I'll try to get it addressed. My email is kind of full, so it will take a little while. So give me a couple of weeks to work on something. I don't know about you, but I thought Dr. Robbins was great. Second time I've heard him now live. Watched him on, on the video a couple times. He really reinforced what I learned last time, right? The ancient brain and the modern brain and how we need to train our modern brain to make hard decisions. Um, we learned about outsiders feeling social pain. Uh, which is the equivalent to real pain. I don't know about you, but I don't think too clearly when I'm punched in the face. Um, and so I'm not sure how we can expect our folks to work at their optimal if they're having pain. All right, so for many of us in the dominant uh, culture, it's not an experience that we've, we've really lived through. Uh, so I'm not sure we're the best to help resolve this on our own. We really do need some help on that. Uh, Dr. Robbins talked about the noise, uh, how noise hides talent. Um, and uh, we can't afford to hide our talent, right? We need all the talent on hands, on deck to help us. As we said before, the stakes are too high. We are really laying the foundation for the future of the Navy and ultimately the outcome for the nation and how we live as Americans. So we can't screw this one up. We really need to take action on it. So I'm going to talk to you a little bit about what I'm going to do next, right? I think training is great, but we need to uh, supplement training with some action. Uh, obviously, I'm going to be meeting with our leadership uh, at the warfare centers and some of our strategic folks, laying out a better, uh, a full plan on this. But a couple of things I know I want to do. Right, one is um, I'm going to ask all the participants to go on Idea Stream and give me your feedback on what you think the barriers are for diversity and inclusion. Okay, and I have all of your email addresses. I know who you are now, and I expect at least one input from everybody, or you may be getting a call from me. How's that? Is that intrusive leadership? Okay. I'm also going to develop a package, at least for our Warfare Center divisions, and I will share that with the headquarters folks and the shipyard folks. It would be a small package of slides that has some key talking points. Uh, we're going to have a training module for the branch heads and the division heads and department heads and then some of the video clips that we have from some of the training events, and then uh, Dr. Robbins again. And what we really want to do is have the branch heads lead this training event with 
the employees. I think that's the right level to have this discussion. I don't think you can do that in a big group. Um, and we want to see how that goes and then get some positive feedback back up through the divisions on that. Like I said, I'll share that with the shipyard folks and also with the headquarters folks. But uh, I can't really direct that uh, in those areas. But I will talk to Mr. Smirchansky about that and Ms. Smoot. Um, we had a couple of tactical issues. Uh, those, like I said, that had specific uh, division headquarters or shipyard concerns. Um, I encourage you to work with your leadership on those things. Uh, again, if you can't get those addressed, please email me. I really do try to use your chain of command, right? Because it's an educational opportunity for them as well as you try to bring these things up. Um, and then again, you can use IdeaStream, Fusion, or email to me and I'll try to get them addressed. Uh, we heard a couple of things in there. Um, one of the things I want to do is look at this, uh, why are we not advertising jobs with multiple series in it? I know we do that at some of the divisions. We'll make a policy across all the warfare centers for that. I still am having issues with uh, ERGs across the warfare centers. I think there's confusion on the list of what's acceptable and what's not. So maybe we'll write a warfare center policy on that. Uh, headquarters has all of these. I don't know why I'm not just following headquarters uh, guidance on this but we'll get that addressed as well. And then I think there's another one about re-looking really looking at our position descriptions. Are they really open? Somebody felt that they were being written for a specific person. Uh, that's not what we want, right? Uh, I think a lot of times we, we write the PD for the person who just had the job. Um, and that sometimes skews the skills that are needed for that job. So we're gonna take a look at that again. So for me personally, I'm going to keep working on myself. As I said, I have, this is a, a journey. Uh, I'm not sure I'll ever be done. Uh, I need to shine some more lights on my blind spots. Uh, I'm going to continue to push on the urgency of this issue because I really do think it's a, a national security issue as well as uh, the right thing to do for the nation. And now, so finally, my challenge to you. Uh, first is don't be a bystander. The training event that was just in here, I learned about white privilege. So I'm going to start using my white privilege to address wrongs when I see it. I encourage all of you other white dominant uh, folks to do the same as you see that. I encourage everybody to do that, actually. Um, that was a new one for me, white privilege, but I will, uh, I'm going to use that when I need to. I'll pull that card out. Uh, remember that we value you, and you need to value yourselves. Have courage, confidence, and build your confidence. Confidence is what will get you your next job. Uh, don't lower your standards or our standards. Get with your leadership and lay out your division plans because I am going to ask them, what are you doing? And uh, just like LDE1, I want to get that feedback and see how we're doing across the Warfare Center divisions. And I believe Ms. Smoot and Mr. Smachansky will be asking the same thing for headquarters. Again, I want to thank, uh, excuse me, I want to thank Pam and Tracy, the speakers, the trainers, and the entire advisory organization team for organizing and putting on what I consider an outstanding performance uh, performance conference. <laughs> okay, so the other thing is please make the time to review the uh, material periodically, right? Uh, you need to refresh yourself and recharge your enthusiasm for what we're trying to get done. As I said, you are our change agents. I need you energized and working 100% max. We have 26,000 people to influence across the warfare centers, right? 70,000 across NAVC. As you heard Mr. Smachansky and Admiral Moore talk about it uh, this morning, this is the pilot, and they're gonna expand it uh, larger. And I hope we're all still part of that because uh, uh, this is personal for me. Uh, make sure that you share what happened and what you learned today and yesterday on Fusion. Everybody have a Fusion account in the Warfare Centers? Uh, raise your hands. It's videotaped so I can find out. <laughs> okay, good. So how about at least a post to everybody who's following you? And where's where's uh, Captain Spencer? You... The number one most prolific Fusion poster. All right. So Francis, this topic next time for me. More on this topic, all right. And then reach out and expand your group, right? To be more inclusive, both at work and at home. Uh, I wanna thank you all for coming. I hope you got a lot out of this. I get a lot out of it. 
we can't change unless you give me feedback on what the barriers are. So you've got to take that home for homework and get those back to me. Okay? Thank you all.